Hey, it's Jay. This video is about processing a fine art architectural image in Photoshop. Let's get started. So most of my videos show me out in the field taking photos and I'll show you how I do it and the process behind it. Uh, but I got some great images this past week in New York City. I did not have my vlogging camera, so there's no footage of me doing it, but I thought I would show you how I processed at least one of these images in Photoshop. So let's jump into my computer right now. So I had to be in New York City last week to run an errand. I took my camera with me, and on the way home, I stopped by the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum. This was a building that was completed in the early 1950s, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. It was actually the only museum he designed, which I think he did a, an amazing job. I hope you agree. Um, I've shot it before, but never in the late afternoon when the sun really splashes great light on the facade of this building. This is pretty much what it looked like on the back of my camera. I've done a little bit of work in Lightroom, really not too much. Now I'm in Photoshop, and what I want to do is show you how I turn this image into this image. Obviously highly processed, I would argue more dramatic. Um, there's a lot of ways of doing the same thing in Photoshop. And so if you know a different way or a better way for some of the things that I'll be doing, please put a comment down below because I can learn from that and others can learn from it as well. Now the first thing I wanted to do is get rid of some distractions, specifically these street signs at the lower edge of the frame. So if I zoom in by hitting Command Plus on a Mac, I can drag down by holding the space bar and then just dragging down. You'll see what I'm talking about. You got this one street sign right next to the M uh, that I would love to get rid of. And so to deal with that, first thing I did was I created a copy of the background layer. I'm going to right click, hit duplicate layer, hit OK. I went up to the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to select one half of the M and I'm going to drag it over a bit. Then I'm going up to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontally, and that just creates a mirror image of it. But then I can drag it over and match it up with the M as best I can. I can hit Command D to deselect. Uh, it does a really good job of it. Now you do have the rest of this street sign. That's pretty easy to get rid of. I chose the Clone Stamp tool make a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key, sample part of the image by hitting the Alt key, clicking, and then you can move it over. I'm going to sample some, I can move it over, sample some, and move it over, sample some here, move it on over. Let's do one more here. Uh, for the post, by the way, that's pretty easy as well. I can use the spot healing brush and simply drag down, it will get rid of it. Now for the other street sign, which is blocking one of the O's in Solomon, here it is, this was even easier. I just took the clone stamp tool, I enlarged my brush by hitting the right bracket key, I'm going to hit Option on a Mac to sample an image, so I sampled one of the other O's, I should make it a little bit bigger, uh, sample this O, and simply dragged it over to this O and dragged around and that was really easy to get rid of. And then the same thing with the post. I can use the spot healing brush, drag down, and I am done. So uh, that, that worked very well. Now to process the image, I used a number of selections. I've already made those selections. It's kind of a tedious process. For all these selections, I use the polygonal lasso tool to outline the different parts of the building, the building itself, the rest of the image. What I want to do first is create a very nice clean background, so get rid of some of those, all of the buildings other than the museum. To do that, I'm going to select, and by the way, to save these selections, you make the selection, you go up to select, and then hit save selection, think of a name for it 
hit OK, and you're done. But again, I've done that already, so I'm going to load some of the selections. I'm going to start with Sky. So I've selected here everything but the building itself. Um, what I want to do is make the entire background that same blue that the sky is. And so I want to sample the sky. I can double click on the color picker here, pick the nice blue that I want, hit OK. I then went to a solid color layer adjustment. And you'll see it makes the entire image that same blue. I'll convert to black and white a little bit later, but that gives you a sense of, uh, of how I did it. Now let's work on parts of the building. I'm going to start with the main spiral of the building, the big part in the middle, um, which I've already again selected. I think I called it spiral. Let's select that. And what I want to do with this uh, part of the building is highlight the curvature of this building. And the best way to do that, i found, is to use a curve adjustment layer, which I will be using throughout this um, process. I'm going to choose a curves adjustment layer uh, for this selection. I want to drag down to darken the entire selection. You can see this part of the building is now getting darker. I'll bring down some of the highlights as well. And so it looks kind of drab and muted. Uh, however, if we go and reselect, what I'm going to use is the gradient tool. I'm going to select on the gradient tool. I'm going to choose the reflective gradient tool, which is right up here. I'm going to, my background is black, which is good because I want the underside to show through, the under layers to show through. I'm going to drag across, and that middle part of the building will become brighter because that's what's below. In fact, I can highlight this even more by choosing another curves adjustment layer, pulling up this time. And again, that's going to brighten the entire selection. But then reselect, go to my gradient tool. This time I want the foreground color to be white because I want this layer to, to be visible. I can drag across and you can see what it does. It brightens the middle part of it. So Here's the before, not bad, but here's the after. You can really see the curvature much better. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to do the same thing for the lower right part of the image, which also is a, a curved part of the facade. So I'm going to load selection. I called it lower right curve. Hit select, and I'm going to go through the same process. Choose a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to drag down to darken the entire Selection. I'm going to reselect. Got my gradient tool already selected, my reflective gradient tool, and I want this time foreground color to be black. I can drag across, and you'll get. Now sometimes it's uh, it's very finicky as far as uh, the exact angle you want to draw that line. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, but once again, I can. Um, choose another curves adjustment layer, brighten up the entire selection. Um, I want to reselect, choose my gradient tool, this time foreground being white, and again drag across, and you can see that middle part of it is now brighter and the outside is darker. So here's the before, here's the after. Um, I'll do a couple more, but I'm not going to go through the whole thing. So the next section I'm going to work on is this flat part of the facade in the lower left. So let me uh, load up that selection. I called it lower face. And I just want to create a very modest gradient here, nothing too dramatic. But I'm pulling up a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to pull down to darken the selection a bit. Uh, then I'm going to reselect. I've got my gradient tool selected. Make sure I've got linear uh, gradient tool. And I'm going to pull over from the left. Again, pretty modest um, gradient. Here's the before, here's the after. Just adds a little bit of interest. I can deselect this by hitting Command D on a Mac. Okay, let's convert to black and white now. Uh, I typically do this in Lightroom, but you can easily do it in Photoshop. Going up to Adjustments, I'm going to choose a black and white adjustment layer. 
And I do want to pull down the blue a little bit to darken that sky and that will allow the building to pop even more. I don't want to go all black, that's too much, but definitely want to darken it a bit. In fact, what helps sometimes is to add a little bit of a gradient to the sky itself, uh, which is fairly easy. So we can reselect or select the sky, load selection, I got sky, uh, we'll choose a curves adjustment layer, we'll brighten it up just a little bit, and then reselect. We'll choose our gradient tool, you know, pull in from the left, and now we'll add a, a gradient to the sky itself. Now you notice that there's a bit of banding now. One nice thing to do to get rid of that banding, one easy thing, is to add a little bit of noise. And so if we go down to noise, add noise, you don't need too much. You can see I'm barely adding any at all. Hit OK it gets rid of the banding very nicely. I can deselect. Now I've done other things to this image. I've played with other parts of the building. I added some uh, streaking clouds. In fact, I have a separate video uh, where I show you how you can do that in Photoshop. Uh, I'll put a link down below for that. But my end result, of course, was this. Um, which I'm very happy with. I think it's fantastic. Hey, if you like this video, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please put those comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and until next time.